going to be a great year for Colorado basketball. Before I start about this year's team, I want to give a shout out to our uh, four NBA guys who embark on their new uh, seasons, Alec Burks and, and Spencer, uh, Dinwiddie, Andre Roberson, and, and obviously Derek White with San Antonio. We're extremely proud of those guys, happy for them. You know, one of the things that's probably most gratifying as a coach is when you see your players uh, 5, 10, 15 years down the road have success. And obviously those guys are in the NBA, which is great, but we've had 19 players matriculate through our program in the seven years we've been here, and all, all 19 have gotten their degrees. They're not all playing in the NBA. They're not all playing overseas. You know, we've got Trey Ockloff is, is an attorney in Denver. Uh, Levi Knutson's in the financial business in Denver. Ben Mills is working in downtown Denver for a, a software company. So. Much like our players, you know, our staff has changed over the last few years. And I just want to make a quick announcement on our staff. Um, you know, we've had tremendous stability since we've been here. Uh, Bill Carton is starting his seventh year as our director of ops and, and uh, film guy. Uh, Sean Carney starting his fifth year. Uh, we lost, obviously, Rodney Billups two years ago to the University of Denver. Really good quality coach, did a lot of great things for us here. Obviously, just recently, Jean Prelo moved on to San Jose State, and he got his first head coaching opportunity. So uh, Mike Rohn is a guy that's been here from day one, along with Coach Carton and myself. And uh, uh, he's going to be our associate head coach. I'm giving him that title. I shouldn't say I'm giving it. Uh, he's earned that title. Um, and so he's a guy that is going to be a tremendous head coach. Much like our players, we want them to move on and have success. Mike Rohn has everything it takes to be a great head coach. Um, coach Greer on our staff, obviously, who replaced Coach Billups, has been a head coach for eight years. Coach English, who just replaced Coach Prelo, is a guy who's got a tremendous future ahead of him. Uh, I've never felt probably as comfortable, as confident in our staff as I do today, and, and we've had some turnover. So uh, congratulations to Coach Rohn. We're excited for him, and hopefully he will have his chance to be a head coach in the, in the not too distant future. So uh, with that, uh, I'll talk about our team. Obviously a whole new uh, outfit this year than what we've had in, in, in years past or certainly even last year. Uh, we're not going to talk about last year a lot, but hopefully we learned some things from last year as players in this program and certainly as coaches. We've got eight uh, freshmen in this class. Uh, Naaman Wright sat out last year, is coming off his red shirt year. Uh, it's a whole new face, whole new look. But I love this team. I love coaching them every day. I love their spirit. I love their competitiveness. I love their effort. And uh, our goal this year is going to be no different than the years past. We want to qualify for the NCAA tournament, compete for a Pac-12 championship, and uh, hopefully be playing our best basketball in the month of March. So uh, with that, I'll take any questions that are on your mind about this year's team or, or, or anything in regards to Colorado basketball. George King kind of just talked about the idea of not accepting a rebuild season. How has this kind of been something you've preached forward to the team? No, that's a great point, George. I'm glad George said that. And you know, we were talking about that as a staff yesterday, as a matter of fact. You know, we, we're, we're not into the rebuild mode. Uh, again, we have a lot of new faces, a lot of young faces, but uh, our uh, internal expectations are no different. And look, the, the four seniors that we have on this year's team, George King, uh, Dom Collier, Tory Miller, Josh Repine, they, they're not into rebuilding. They're, this is their last year. So we owe it to them uh, to have as good a year as we can have and hopefully uh, uh, get to the NCAA tournament in advance. Coach, you never quite had a roster makeup like this with the youth, uh, at least here at CU. Uh, so far in practices, uh, has there been any kind of unique or, or different challenges for you that you've encountered? You know, finding the balance, the challenge for me in practice is finding the balance of letting these guys play through their mistakes and stopping them and correcting them every step of the way. Because I feel like I could blow the whistle literally every time down the floor, but I know, you know, November 10th is coming here pretty quick uh, when we tip it off and can't do that during the games. So you got to let these guys play a little bit. The film room is an area, I think, where this team really has to make some growth and, and take the mistakes they made yesterday, see them on film, come out the next day, and not make the same mistakes over again. And so uh, finding that balance as a coach, how much do you stop them in practice and correct and teach, which we're doing a lot of, but 
you don't want to do too much of that uh, and, and lose that flow. Sometimes you can lose the flow of practice when you do that. So uh, very challenging because uh, it's a young group and we're still in the process of just trying to develop habits. And, and that's, uh, that takes some time. It doesn't happen overnight. Coach, uh, of all the years, is this the best you could ask for in the year league? Is that a bond or whatever? Yeah, the Italy trip was not just thrown, you know, plucked out of thin air. I mean, it was planned. We knew that this year's team needed it because we had so many new faces, the way recruiting was going. We registered, you know, Dallas Walton and Alex last year, Alex Strading, and then and Naaman was sitting out. After transferring from Missouri, we knew we were going to lose a lot of firepower last year, a lot of experience. So the Italy trip was critical. Uh, it's behind us. It's now it's hey, uh, it was practice number 12 today, but really it was practice number 22 because we had 10 this summer. So uh, it was good for us. We, we learned a lot. We gained a lot. But it's in the rearview mirror. It's onward and upward from here. But it was a great experience. But you less than two weeks before the first game, exhibition against Mines. Um, what is the starting lineup, and have you started to get a sense of it? I don't know it for sure. I think the, the, the nice thing about this year's team is it's not about the starting lineup, uh, because I think we're going to have quality depth. Uh, the key with this year's team is who's going to finish the games. And the, the nice thing about this team as a coach, as I look at it, is we've got a chance to play big with certain lineups. We've got a chance to play small with certain lineups. I don't know the starting lineup as of today, um, and uh, that's something that I'm, you know, kind of evaluating on a day-to-day -day basis. But I don't put a lot of stock in the starting lineup. I would be more concerned with who's finishing the game. If it's a one-point game with, you know, a minute to go, <laughs> uh, I got to put five guys out there that I trust are going to try to do things that we expect them, and, and uh, they can get it done. People talking a lot about position battles here <clears throat> through the first two weeks. Have you seen the guys respond and say, OK, there is playing time to be earned. I need to take my game to another level. I hope so. I mean, the one message I've given this team, even two, three weeks ago, you know, when we started uh, on October the 1st, like, there, there's not a starting line. Like, there should be nobody in here that feels comfortable with, you know, what you did last year has nothing, no bearing on what you're going to do this year. Whether you're a senior, whether you're a freshman, doesn't matter. I want our players to feel like uh, there's playing time to be earned, and uh, I think that's important every year. Uh, so there's, there's no entitlement. There's no, this is my spot. I got it. I mean, you got to come to work every day and, and, and battle. Coach, uh, Tori had a stretch of confidence by last year, where he really blossomed, uh, really turned into a player that was not to be. Where's he at right now? Tori's doing a, a very good job. I think the biggest thing with Tori I've talked about with him is accepting who he is and not trying to be somebody he's not. And if, if I think he's starting to kind of feel that and understand that, he's rebounding the ball better than he's ever rebounded the ball since he's been here. I mean, the, the scrimmages we've had, the, the stats we keep in practice, he's, he's really been, especially in the offensive class, he's been our best offensive rebounder, uh, something we've challenged him to do. And uh, he's finishing around the basket. He's, his body's good. He looks good. He feels good. Uh, hopefully this can be a breakout year for not only Tory but for Dom as well, you know, as, as their senior years and, and George. But Tory's really rebounded the ball well. How much have you about the guys not had a long time, but uh, the last few years you had guys that pretty much knew who was going to be able to start the line. Does that create a little more intensity, a little more uh, activity and competition? I think it does. And when you have so many freshmen, I mean, it's like, okay, there are, there are, there are literally spots to be had. I mean, whereas in years past, you know, you had, you know, last year we had two freshmen, uh, Dell and, and, and Lucas, and, and obviously we had a couple that uh, that aren't back. But we had a lot of veterans that were experienced players, and sometimes just the feeling that, well, they're seniors, it's their turn. Type, I don't want that. Uh, I, I want our seniors to be pushed by freshmen <laughs> and to be looking over their shoulders. That means we're recruiting well. Uh, and I there's got to be an edge to us at Colorado, and there should be an edge to us. Uh, you know, uh, Pac-12 Media Days was, was last week. They picked us ninth, and uh, if our guys don't have an edge after that, I don't know what will create that. But we, we have to have an edge that we didn't have, again, last year. Uh, we had it certainly when we got here. Um, 
has kind of come and gone. We 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 got to play with it every single year and every single day, every single game. You know, a guy that's probably stood out uh, head and shoulders above the rest is McKinley Wright. Uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, he's uh, he's really stepped stepped up for a freshman. Some other guys they come and they go. You know, Deshaun Schwartz has had some great moments. Tyler Bay, great moments. Uh, Evan Batty, great moment. You know, every every freshman down the line has had great moments. McKinley's been that kind of day in and day out guy in terms of that freshman class. Dallas Walton has had some really good moments. Uh, Alex Strady continues to improve and get better. So that freshman class is going to be up. It's going to be down. That's the nature of freshmen. But uh, hopefully they can uh, reach a, a level of maturity and consistency uh, as the season unfolds. I was hoping into going after McKinley the second time he's available in the career cycle and how big an impact he made. Well, the, the, the biggest thing is, you know, when we had our year-end meetings and it was apparent that Bryce Peters was not going to come back and that Thomas Akiazili was going to go back to Belgium and play professionally, that's obviously two guards that left the program. And we went from not needing a guard, that's why we weren't recruiting, you know, uh, McKinley early to needing one and needing one like that can come in and play. So, you know, recruiting a lot of times is based on need, not uh, based on you always want good players, but we really needed a point guard. He opened up his recruiting. Uh, staff did a great job. Coach Rohn did a great job of, of identifying him. We jumped on him quickly, got to Minneapolis, you know, met with him, met with his uh, family, his people, and, and had him here for a visit, and, and it was a pretty quick recruiting process. But I can't tell you how um, fortunate we are to have him. And I, I think if you ask McKinley, he feels very good and fortunate to be at a place like the University of Colorado. Coach, how many redshirts do you uh, see have? We'll redshirt at least one uh, person, uh, maybe more. We'll see. Um, I'll have an announcement on that probably uh, late this week or probably early next week. What will determine that in this week? Uh, I can't really talk about that. I'll, I'll determine that. Um, Just kind of a feel. Yeah, that. yeah. I'll, I'll have that information. With, with Coach English on staff, do you expect to have somebody out there that can uh, step back and shoot the three all the time? <laughs> coach, the, the nice thing about having Coach English on staff is the one guy that's young enough and in shape, he can jump in there, he can demonstrate, he can uh, move a little. I've put him in some difficult situations all, already with some injuries, but he can't necessarily practice with us. But you know, he's got a he's got a feel for the game. Obviously, he just got done playing the game not too long ago. He's in good shape. He's young. Uh, Coach English brings a lot to our staff. Not just um, again. I think so much is made of coaches now. You know, they're no different than players. We want our coaches to be well-rounded. They're not just recruiters or just offensive guys or just defensive guys or just administrative guys. Uh, they got to be able to do a little bit of everything, and, and Coach English is a young coach that's growing and developing, but he's got a chance to be really special, and it's, it's he's been a good addition. We got time for one final question in here. We have a couple minutes for follow-ups out there, but one final one here. You've got a lot of young guys on this team. You've talked a lot about it, but there's a senior out there that's played probably more games than anybody else you have. What do you have to have for George King? George King. What we need from George is leadership and consistency. He's got to be that consistent, stable guy who knows he's been there, knows he's done that, and can uh, give those freshmen uh, that, that rock that they can kind of look to, especially when things get tough, not lose his hit. George is a very composed player, uh, which, which I think will help him in that regard, but he can't be thinking about just George King and his game. And I think that's the difference a lot of players have to make going from underclassmen to upperclassmen, you get in that leadership role, he has to get out of himself. Get over himself, get out of himself, and kind of have the, the big picture with this team and, and set the example, but now hold his teammates accountable to that example and uh, not get too high and not to get too low. You mentioned some of the guys who have made great progress. Who has surprised you this year? Who's come back or come in? first time that you actually were surprised by some things you're doing. That's a good question. I think, you know, Tory, I, I, I'd, I'd go to Tory. Not that he surprised me, but I think I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy with 
um, how his mindset is right now. I think he's in a good place mentally in terms of uh, what he's doing and what he's doing well. He's been he's been rebounding the ball extremely well for us. So uh, I don't know if surprised is the right word on that. Um, I'm, I'll be honest with you, McKinley Wright, again, I expect a lot out of him. He's a terrific player, but I think he's exceeded my expectations as a freshman up to this point. Now it's early and we've got a lot, a lot of stuff going, but uh, those two guys would probably be the first that I would think of. Hey, Coach, hey, with, just uh, two more questions with, here for Coach. With uh, Mike Rohn's promotion, what what goes into, I guess, associate head coach beyond just the job? I mean, are there more responsibilities uh, or anything no, like that? No, not really. It's just it's just the, the acknowledgement that, hey, this guy has what it takes to be a head coach. I mean, look, I think Kim English is going to be a great head coach someday. I think Billy Greer has been, and if he wants to be again, he'll have that opportunity. So I think the big thing is the public acknowledgement that Mike Rohn has done an unbelievable job since he's been here, recruiting-wise, coaching. Uh, and he deserves the opportunity uh, to be a head coach. And uh, so I, I, I would love for that to happen at some point, and I would love for other athletic directors or you know, if somebody's on our website and see associate head coach, it's like, oh, that guy's head coach material. I think they're all head coach material, quite frankly. Um, but uh, he, he's earned that title. And, and uh, so not a lot of day-to-day -day things are going to change, though, his, his job. Title doesn't change, or title changes, but his responsibilities really don't change. Did it bother you having to change the or move Paradise Jam from St. Thomas to Virginia? Does anything change there? Well, we don't get to go to the beach. <laughs> you know, instead of three games in four days, now we got three games in five days. I'm not going to disrespect Lynchburg, Virginia. I've never been to Lynchburg, Virginia, but I've been to St. Thomas, and St. Thomas is a beautiful place. Obviously, you know, our hearts and Thoughts and prayers go to the people on that island, and it's it's a shame that you know that natural disaster made made it unable for us to go down there and for them to host us because they're great people down there. I went when I was an assistant at Wichita State, and I I still have great memories from that tournament. And I know our families were looking forward to it. A lot of fans were. So we're not going. We're going to Lynchburg. We're going to make the most of it. Hey, three games in three days. It'll hopefully get us ready for the Pac-12 tournament.